Good morning, everyone. I'm coming to you from an unnamed trail very close to my property. Last week, we discussed the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. So below as above. The micro world will always mirror the macro world. The series of patterns that can be found throughout the universe. This week, I want to discuss the first hermetic principle known as the principle of mentalism. The reason why I didn't start this series of the hermetic principles off with mentalism is because it's a little bit more difficult of a concept than correspondence. But before we begin, I want to make a small correction. In my first video that I filmed, the one titled, Why So Much War? When I was discussing Moses leading his people out of Egypt, and when they parted the Sea of Reeds, I misspoke. I said, wind setback when I should have said when set down. I realized that after I watched the video. It's a small error, but I just wanted to clear it up. I want to give you all the best information I have. As you know, I'm trying to film these videos uncut and unedited. Just me and my thoughts as we walk around and enjoy this temple of creation. So this week, I have my notebook open. So you're probably going to see me glance down quite often, and that's just because I want to give you the best information I have. Now with that, we'll jump in as soon as I cross this tiny little stream, so I have to watch my step. There we go. So, what is the principle of mentalism? Well, it states, the all is mind and the universe is mental. The universe, in all its forms and manifestations, is a projection of the material world that was created by the unknowable and undefinable creator known as the all. This concept includes both physical and mental matter and energy that we are able to perceive and witness with our material senses. Sight, sound, touch, taste, you know those. In other words, we are all the creation found in the mind of the all. We are made, so therefore there has to be a maker. Yeshua referred to the All as the Living Father, as we discussed in the last video. But we're also going to see in this video that he referred to him as the One, capital O. Anyway, this principle also suggests that there is a connection between all of creation and all creatures of creation, from your smallest single cell organism to that cute little jumping spider with the big eyes to us as human beings. And there is a connection from the smallest particles of an atom to the largest galaxies in the known universe. So what does this mean? The all created all of this in his mind. So we are able to create with our mind. So the mind is the most powerful force in the universe. And with this, you have the power to change your material world. Now we're not talking about turning a green leaf pink, but we're talking about changing your station in the world. This is known as mental transmutation. 
And the reason why we know this, that everything is mental, is because it is nothing more than the electrical impulses in your brain. Think about it. What is sound? Sound is the vibration that your eardrums pick up and then sends or transmits that information to your brain, which then considers it a known or unknown sound, a voice of a loved one, the sound of a singing bird. What is sight? Sight is nothing more than bends in the wavelength of light that your brain interprets as known or unknown objects. So, the universe, creation, is nothing more than electrical signals perceived by our brain. But now let's get back to the all. We are all manifestations within the mind of the all. Meaning that the all is the manifestation of our minds as well. What is the all? The all is the source energy that unites everything. It's the divine spark, the divine light of creation. It is unknowable and undefinable. Today, we call the all God. Now, this concept of the all is not just a hermetic principle. This also goes along with what Yeshua taught us. In the Gnostic book called the Apocryphon of John, some may know it as the secret book of John, which was written sometime after Yeshua's death and before 180 AD when Bishop Aaronitis, I believe that's how you say his name, wrote about it in his treatise on heresies. So this is the time where they were trying to stamp out the conscious mysticism of Christianity and turn it more into, dare I say, the controlling form that we have today. So, anyway, with that being said, the book is basically a narrative. You had John grieving for the death of his Savior and his Savior, Yeshua, decides to visit him one night. And Yeshua explains all of creation to John. We're not going to get into this, at least not yet, because there's a lot to unpack. But what Yeshua does tell John is the one, the all, God, is indescribable, for no one can put words to it. The one is inconceivable because no one can comprehend it. The one is pure light. What is pure light? Energy. And as I said, there's so much more to the description, but that's outside of the scope of this video and the Hermetic Principle. You can think of the All or God not as a human, not in human form. It's not some old man sitting on a throne with a long white beard and long white hair passing judgment. That's not what God is. That's not the all. God is an immeasurable, undefinable, pure divine energy that permeates throughout everything from the little spider web, to the bird dancing over there, to the hairs on your head. He's in everything. 
He knows everything. He created everything inside his mind. As we do with the world we perceive around us. So that brings us to the three distinct levels of consciousness that our mind is capable of. We have our conscious mind, which is just how we perceive the external and internal existence. We know this is a tree because we've seen trees. We know there's are leaves because we know what a leaf is. We've been told what a leaf is. Now our subconscious mind is deeper. When we look at an old growth tree, we think about how beautiful and how it makes us feel. That's your subconscious mind. It controls your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. But on top of that, if we delve deeper, the realm between realms of your consciousness, you'll find something called the super consciousness. This is the God consciousness. This is your direct link to the divine. This is where the mental transmutation occurs. This is where the posi positive reformations, power of positive thinking occurs. It's your intuition. It's that little voice inside your head telling you, hey, don't do this, you can get hurt. Or hey, do this, buy that new windsurfer. You can afford it. I'm gonna get yelled at for that one. That is the universe sending you messages. The trick is tapping in to your super consciousness. Because when you do, you discover who you are. Now, I want to cover, there is a great Canadian philosopher named Robin Sharma. I believe I got his name correct. And he once compared our minds to a garden. I want to expand on what he said, but for purposes of the Hermetic Principle. So if you think about it, you want to create a garden in your mind. Well, you need to plant the seeds. Seeds of positivity, of joy, of delight, of caring. Those are all good seeds. Dread, despair, hate, those are all bad seeds. The good seeds will grow into beautiful flowering flora. The bad seeds will grow into unmanageable weeds. Now, the attention you give to these thoughts will be the sunlight that your seeds need for photosynthesis. The emotions you give to these thoughts will be the water. Once your garden starts to grow, once your thoughts start to come to fruition, if you've had too many negative or dreadful thoughts, your garden will be overtaken by weeds. But if you can stay positive and only plant the seeds of positivity, your garden will flourish in every color, in every bloom. It'll become something amazing. Your own Garden of Eden inside your mind. I know it seems a little weird to think like that, but it's true. Now, we talked about in the last video how our mind is clouded. 
because of the poisons we ingest, the poisons we watch on television or on the internet. We live in a constant state of hypnosis, trying to divert our attention from who we really are. We listen to tycoons telling us one thing and vapid politicians telling us the other when we know none of it's true. You can't think like that. You have to look inside. You have to find out who you are, who you want to be. You can meditate on it. You can write in a journal. Some call it soul journaling. But having that power of positive thinking will change you. Now, in the book of Luke, in chapter 17, I think somewhere around verse 20, the Pharisees asked Yeshua about the coming kingdom of God. And Yeshua responded, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor is it see there or see here. The kingdom of God is within you, just like we learned in the Gospel of Thomas, meaning you have the power inside you to affect change simply by thinking about it. I know it sounds easier than it is. The point that I'm making is light attracts light and darkness attracts darkness. If you have thoughts of light, light will follow you. If you surround yourself with positive people, with beautiful things, your outlook will become more positive, more beautiful. And in turn, the goals that you've set when you were planting your garden, subconsciously, you'll start to work harder to help those goals grow, to build those flowers. So the conclusion is, how do we escape this matrix that we find ourselves in? The rat race of modern times, where we work our hands to the bone for pennies on the dollar, and then the politicians take half of that, and then we can barely afford the plastics that they disguise as food? Well, we have to know ourselves. We have to know the power we truly have inside ourselves. And when we know the power we have, we know the face of God. Well, I think that's about it for this video. I try not to ramble as much as I normally do. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know the whole YouTube thing. You can like and subscribe. And if you want to support me, there's links to my books down below. Some of them go deep. Some of them are just for fun. Anyway, I'll see you again with another video soon. Bye. Love you.